think I learned about Nigel at sort of the same time everybody did, really, when um, Bonnie Henry and, and the health minister were doing the daily uh, press updates. I, I wanted to draw something about those press briefings because everybody was so enamored with Bonnie Henry and, and, and the message and the calmness that she had. And uh, I was just so struck by Nigel. I was just like, who is this guy? Because he, he's so expressive and he was so interesting to watch. He was making the sign that I, I knew right away. It was stay six feet apart from other people. And so I drew this cartoon for Vancouver is Awesome and it was Nigel. And uh, it was him doing, doing that sign, and, and it said, you, me, six feet apart. Once I had drawn it uh, and sent it to Vancouver is Awesome, a guy in Vancouver contacted me through Instagram and said, hey, I really love that poster. Would you be OK uh, if I made some posters out of it and posted them up around town with some friends? I thought, great, absolutely. And he just kept sending me pictures of where it was showing up around town. Today, in addition, um, we have taken the extra step of declaring a public health emergency in the province of British Columbia. Well, I remember back in March when COVID first started spreading here, the public was concerned and looking for guidance. I was called upon to interpret for the broadcasts. I used a particular sign for physical distancing and it really resonated with the public they could so clearly see two people putting two meters or more distance between themselves. It became quite popular. Not sure why that caught on, but it really did. Everyone knows the sign now from TV. You can see it on t-shirts, billboards, along streets. You can see it everywhere. People see the sign and they associate it with Nigel. The deaf community have a different name that we know him by. But the public saw this on TV and now know him by that sign. As a person who is deaf, for whom ASL is my first language, Having a qualified deaf interpreter on screen means I am able to access news updates comfortably without the language interfering. Many hearing people who had no awareness of American Sign Language um, really became fascinated with watching him daily. And it was meaningful that it was a deaf interpreter. Dr. Bonnie Henry would give the message and then off screen would be a hearing signing interpreter. Spoken language uses vocal inflection to relate tone, whereas tone has to be conveyed through facial expression in a visual way, in ASL. The deaf community can then see where emphasis is placed or when a critical message is being conveyed. It's great. It's about time. We've had captions, but to have Nigel on screen interpreting the ASL makes the information clear. He's done a fantastic job. I then take the message and convey it visually in a way that retains clarity and impact. Remember, ASL is a visual language. Captions provide a 2D linear stream of English words. The meaning is easily lost in process. My job as the interpreter is to make that information accessible to the broader deaf community in our shared language. When they announced we were to self-isolate, it was clear things were very serious. This was not to be taken lightly. 
We were left wondering what would happen to accessibility moving forward. For example, with COVID testing or for in-person conversations now that interpreters couldn't be on site. Without access to interpreters, it was difficult and we didn't know how things would be going forward. Virtually overnight, doctors had to move their practice to online platforms with no technology in place or experience or expertise to do it. This change in the system excluded the deaf community, leaving them in uncertain times with nowhere to access information. I came to discover Nigel was deaf when I was vacuum cleaning in his room and he never moved, he never woke up from anything. So I suspected then he was only um, a few months old at the time and he wore a hearing aid when he was 18 months old. It didn't really make that much difference to him but he wore it anyway. He was insistent that we did not learn sign language. We offered to and he said, no, no, speak to me, speak to me. So we did that. Possibly he wanted to seem more like a normal child and has people speak to him and him understand. I really don't know. I've never asked him that. But we have both agreed that it was a mistake not to learn sign language. I remember I was probably about nine years old and I was reading in my room. My dad came in and he said to me, never use your deafness as an excuse for anything. I wasn't sure what he meant by that at the time and he didn't elaborate, but it stuck with me. Now when I see people leveraging the fact that they are deaf for discounts to get out of things or as an excuse, it doesn't sit well for me. I'm a human being just like everyone else. Of course there are challenges in life, but I learn from them and I find a way around them. When you fall, you have to pick yourself up, dust yourself off and carry on. I prefer to navigate around obstacles, making my own way through. Obstacles are a part of the journey, and life is just that, a journey. I always remember him saying to me, Mom, when I grow up, will I be able to hear the birds sing? And I had to say no. I really wanted to be a pilot. I was invited into the cockpit, and as a young boy, I thought it was incredible. The whole place was covered in dials, knobs and lights. It had those headsets, the works. I was awestruck. I saw the pilots working the controls and speaking through their headsets, and I had a moment of pause. I came to it all on my own, but I realized this might not be the ideal career for me. I had wanted so much to be a pilot, but in the end, I went in another direction. I came to that conclusion on my own, and that's what I want for every child. Allow them to decide what works best for them without interference. People say to these kids, you'll never be able to do that. That's something you can't be. Who are they? How are they to know a child's dreams and goals? Regardless if a child is deaf or not, they should not be limited based on what others think. You cannot impose your own beliefs on a child's life, dreams, goals, or passions. Who are they to tell a child they can't? When the gun goes off, deaf people feel it. Even swimmers who hit the water before the sound dies away. I taught swimming at the school for the deaf. 
Initially, Nigel only communicated through speech, and then he used cued speech, and eventually signed English. You know, I really encouraged him through all those years to learn the language, and when he finally found ASL, well, his whole life changed. I had heard Nigel was on a hearing swim team, so I approached him and I asked if he'd be interested in competing in the Deaf Olympics. He had never heard of the Deaf Olympics, and although he was resistant, I kept on him about it. It's time to enjoy the game. I was 15 or 16 at the time. It was the first time I felt I was normal. I know, what is normal anyway? But I was in a place where everyone was signing, people of all kinds. I realized then that this was my community. This is where I belong. When I came back, I remember two of the older deaf community members commented that they could see I finally understood what they'd been telling me all along. I've never looked back. There was one deaf man who told me to go to the Deaf Olympics, but at the time, I really didn't want to go. I was trying to blend in, and going to the Deaf Olympics was not going to help, but he was insistent and encouraged me to go. When I finally went, I was absolutely blown away. There are several barriers that continue to exist for us at Deaf Children's Society. One of them is still that mainstream belief that American Sign Language is something less than spoken language. We still have children that are coming to us at age three and four that have little to no language. I was the only deaf person in my world for so long that I believed something was wrong with me. When I was about 13 years old, I had an interpreter who explained to me that ASL and English are not the same. You can't think of it as word-for-word -word translation. Instead, you read the English sentence as a whole and find the equivalent in ASL. So I tried that myself, and it was one of those moments that gives you chills. Something clicked, and it all made sense. Other deaf people haven't had that realization, so I take the time to explain until they have their own moment. It's so rewarding when they do, so this work has really become my passion. That birth to five is a very important time, a critical period for language learning. And if consistent language input is not provided, then essentially a disability is created in the child that did not exist in the first place. When deaf children can't communicate or express themselves fully, they act out in frustration. They're seen as angry kids, and people believe that is a product of their deafness. In reality, it's the adults who need to examine their own contribution. Part of the teaching process is identifying where general knowledge or context is missing. That's an indicator for me to pause the lesson and fill in those gaps for these students. I provide formal instruction on information that people normally pick up on from conversation around them. Filling in the gaps and catching them up on these topics opens up the world for them. It changes everything, how they see things, what they think, how they live. It's like a part of them was dormant this whole time and now it's been awakened. It was that way for me too. I was born completely deaf, and they gave me implants when I was in China. Oh. 
Everything that happened was a dark secret, and I only learned about the details recently. I remember I had to communicate through speech alone, and the teacher would force me to practice speaking with my voice. When I was around two or three years old in China, I spent quite a bit of time in the hospital for surgeries. I remember being there, IVs, lying in bed. The whole process felt like physical abuse. I had no information what was being done to me, and now I can put two and two together. I was there for surgery for cochlear implants, but I had no idea at the time. My speech had to be perfect, and now it feels like the teacher's actions were abuse. It's so traumatic, the whole thing. I'm realizing all this now that I'm older. I don't have fond memories of that teacher. Cochlear implants and hearing aids, those are tools. And when those tools are not being worn, that person is still deaf and they still have an identity that is connected to um, deaf culture. Really, the brain is, is designed and patterned for language and it does not discriminate between visual language and spoken language. By introducing sign language right from the beginning, the brain is starting to develop those neural pathways. It's starting to build and strengthen existing tissue. And so why would you not want to give that to your child to give them that start right away? <laughs> definitely wasn't a decision that we took lightly and it definitely was not um, a decision that okay he's gonna have CIs and that's you know he'll be hearing and and that's it for us it was always one more tool for him the entire spectrum is available to him. Mm -hmm. If he's 14 and decides, I want to completely embrace my deaf identity and I don't want to wear my CIs anymore, that he would know that we support it. We're, we're fully on board with him acquiring more sign and, and just existing in the way that's comfortable for him. The BC Special Education Guide has had a profoundly damaging impact. The first two areas of instruction listed address speech and listening skills. Only in the third point is sign language mentioned. And the worst part is, it says to include deaf culture if necessary. How dare they say if necessary? Imagine saying to the indigenous community or the black community, or Asian community that their culture is to be instructed only if necessary. They'd be rightfully furious, and so are we. The problem is, deaf people are constantly silenced on these issues. We ask, we lobby, we fight. Every child should decide their own journey, the opportunity to take the path they choose rather than being told how they should be and what they should do. Enough is enough. People are often not always aware that the language exists, and uh, most of us as hearing people, I don't think we have very much knowledge of deaf culture. Nigel's personal experience resulted in access to university education for the deaf community myself included. UBC was the first university I attended, and I had interpreters provided. I had access. As a direct result of Nigel's own journey, we're all provided that access. Speaking to Nigel just recently, he was telling me that he speaks seven different sign languages fluently, which is incredible if you think about it. You, you have to know the vocabulary and the grammar. You also need to know how to interpret it. Nigel, Nigel is internationally, nationally, and locally recognized. He's looked up to as a role model. They all mean Nigel. Everybody seemed to know him in that community. And uh, of course, just recently, He's become super famous. So now I refer to him as my famous son, Nigel. <laughs> uh... 
So I think, being on the broadcasts, I hope, that it is a bit of a turning point. So what it's done is a big spotlight has been put on Nigel, but really what it's done is put a spotlight on the need for American Sign Language and access for deaf British Columbians to be able to get the same information that all of us hearing individuals are getting at the same time. And I'm very hopeful and optimistic uh, that many of the parents who would previously have thought that deafness was an unknown because they'd never met a deaf person will not feel that way. That they will say, oh, I know, I know a deaf person. I, I've met Nigel, I've, I've seen Nigel. Are you curious to know about who Nigel is? Well, we all know Nigel, but we'd love to know more. Even in dire circumstances, I think you can find some positive. There's been recognition of language here. In the deaf community, there's often a pathological medical perspective looking down on deaf people who are using sign language. And that deafness is about the ear. And there's something wrong with that person that's deaf. But we're not just people who can't hear. We're full human beings. We've got hearts, we've got brains. We're not just our ears. I'd love to just sit back one day, have a good cup of tea, not have to be political and advocate. I just want to be able to relax and have things be right, but that's not quite where we're at. The great thing about Nigel, now having met him, is he's kind of this superhero. He's just out there reminding us to sort of uh, stay safe, uh, be kind to each other. He just carries himself with such grace. He's like a superhero. How does it feel to have the roles reversed and you be the voice of Nigel? Ah, yeah, put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> you know, going through this um, most difficult and challenging of years, very early on we recognized the importance of being able to communicate, to communicate with everybody in, in BC. And when Nigel came into our world, it was just such an amazing bright spot to know that he was able to communicate in the same way that I tried to um, with a whole group of people that needed that information. And uh, it was just so powerful. And I'm, I'm 
I'm immensely grateful to Nigel and his team for being able to support us through this.